Situated in the California desert is a sanctuary for one of the most misunderstood animals, the ultimate beast of burden, the donkey. Donkeys are a highly intelligent animal, a very caring animal. Finding a home for any donkey is a real challenge. Next up, Addison, the gentle donkey's adoption tale. Valley Donkey Rescue, Mark Myers has an almost magical connection with all the donkeys and burrows in his care. People, by and large, don't understand the plight of these donkeys in our society. They're forgotten. Uh, you have such a caring, compassionate animal that has such feelings, and they are so terribly abused and neglected, and no one really cares. So we have kind of taken up that torch, and you know we've been accused of caring too much. We've, we've dedicated everything in our lives, everything, our, our, our family revolves around these animals. And we're, we're very passionate about what we do because someone has to be. The donkey has so much love in its heart that it will bond with animals around it or people. Our goal is to rehabilitate all the donkeys and then place them in permanent homes where they can live out their lives as a part of a loving family. One of Mark's favorite donkeys is three-year-old Addison whose personality reflects the love and commitment Mark and his family provide for these animals. When Addison came to us, uh, he was very scared of people. He had been mistreated. And since he's been here, he's gone from a donkey that wanted no contact with people to being a donkey that can't be without the contact. He loves people. He's one of the first ones to come and greet the visitors as they come in. He loves kids. He's very safe around kids. He's a joy to be around. He's, uh, he's fun. He's caring. He's, he's just a huge part of our family. Because Addison has come so far with his training and with his physical condition and everything, it's, he's such a template for everything else that we do here. For all, he's a, he's a role model for all the other donkeys and burros. Addison's recovery and acceptance of people came from Mark's painless hands-on approach to training and socializing all of his rescued donkeys and burros. Currently at the rescue, we have 90 donkeys. In addition to the donkeys, we have just about every kind of animal imaginable here. And they all are rescued and they all come from some type of terrible past. They need to understand that you have their best interests at heart. That's why we spend so much time uh, befriending them before we ever try to do any kind of training. Because once you befriend the donkey and he trusts you, then it's simply a matter of asking your friend to do you a favor. We come out and work with them daily. We, we don't like to pressure them because the pressure will just make things worse. We have to let them progress at their own rate, but we do give them the opportunity daily to come up and interact with us. These guys, if you spend a little time with them when they're first born and as their baby, will become so friendly and so used to people that they become just great animals. And so we come out and we spend a lot of time doing stuff like this, touching him all over, getting him used to everything, so he knows that it's okay, that people are okay. We, you, you can't spend this much time working with some, an animal or a person or anything and not become very attached to them. So the kids, my wife, everyone has just really become attached to Addison. Josh and Jake really love Addison. He's, uh, he's a great donkey and they really bonded with him. Uh, I, I think it's his gentle side, the fact that he's very careful around him. Addison, uh, he teaches us responsibility. And uh, me and Jake and our family, know what he likes and he doesn't like. And I can tell he's writing this right now. The kids have really spent a lot of time with Addison since he's been here, and he's uh, become one of their favorites. Because he just, he's naturally attracted to the kids, I think they, the kids have sensed that, so they, they spend a lot more time with him than they do with some of the others. Addison, because of his uh, abusive background, had to be fixed emotionally as well as physically. So we were dealing with his uh, physical ailments 
while we were journaling and, and getting to trust people again. So there was a long period of time when Addison wasn't available for adoption because of that. Now that uh, he has recovered, and now that he's such a, a friendly and loving creature, now we can make him available. He's really become a, a part of our whole family, and we hate to see him go. But because we are a rescue, we have to make more room. His going to a new home makes it means that we have more room for to bring another one in. So that's what's important in what we do. Mark deals with more than just abused domestic animals. We've also started a wild burrow program where we work with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and we capture wild burrows. The ones we're working with are being hit along a state highway. There's just overpopulation in the area. And so as a means to reduce our number, we're going up and we are uh, capturing and placing them in new homes as well. Mark's rescue of wild burrows is about to begin in the Nevada desert. Early morning starts Mark off on his 700-mile journey to the Nevada desert, where an overpopulation of burrows runs wild on government land. And today we are driving to Sheldon, Nevada, to pick up 14 wild burrows that have been captured that need to be relocated. There are far more burrows than the refuge can handle, and many are finding their way to the highway and being killed. He's not the least bit intimidated. He's not afraid. He's still unafraid. He's taking a bite of food right now. Unlike Addison, who was abused by his owner, this wild burrow has had no human interaction and no reason to fear Mark's presence, especially since the burrows Mark will bring home have already been captured. The way we're, we're catching our burrows is to set up large capture pens. Uh, we don't believe we should be chasing them with helicopters or throwing ropes at them from horseback. Uh, so what we do is we have these large corral panels set up. Uh, we bait them in with uh, an orchard grass, which is a little, little more lush than the desert surrounding desert vegetation, so it gives them somewhat of an incentive to come in. We make uh, salt blocks and water available, and so they get very comfortable coming in and out of the trap location. And then when we're ready to do captures, we just wait till we have enough in the trap, and we simply pull the rope that holds the gate, and we've caught our burrow. Once they're in, though, if they feel challenged, they get disoriented and they can't see this opening. So as they look, all they see is the bars and they can't figure out which way to go. And so they, they basically catch themselves. Mark moves from Wrangler to Veterinarian as he tags and deworms each rescued burrow. We have to administer the paste warmer into the mouth which is a challenge, because she's not going to want it in her mouth. Oh, it's wet on here. All right. Okay. She wasn't too crazy about that. Got a little on the outside of her mouth, but that will do. Whew, she is really stressed. It's actually human instinct to want to touch her and pet her and comfort her to get her relaxed, but that's the worst thing you can do. She doesn't understand what touching means. So what we're going to do is we're going to let her out of here and let her rejoin her friends and calm down. From there, we back a trailer up to the, the capture panel. And by manipulating some of the gates, we just leave them a small area that leads to the trailer. And usually, if you wait long enough, they will walk into the trailer just to see what's going on. So again, we haven't stressed them, we haven't pushed on them, uh, we, we haven't had to use any forceful means, and we transport them back to California. Go on now. So where's my 
yard doing for us is very important because we know the burrows are going to get home. We don't have to worry about them once they're gone from here. I would like to make people more aware of the plight of the American donkey. Uh, they are so responsible for our history, especially in the western United States. The roads, the railroads, the mines, uh, the missions, everything was built on the back of these donkeys, but yet they've lost their place in our society. We are done with the loading and uh, we're on our way home. We've got about a 12 hour trip ahead of us. We'll do it with as few stops as possible so that we don't have to keep the burrows in the trailer any longer than we have to. Uh, it's hard enough on it to be moved from the wild into captivity, but then to put them in a box for 12 hours is pretty difficult on them. So we try to make it as easy as possible. It's quite a culture shock for these uh, wild burrows to come into a domestic life. Uh, we will introduce some of the wild ones to some of the gentle ones. There's no great book on how to gentle a burrow, and the reason for that is the only way to do it is to take time. Take time out of your schedule, come out here and hang out with them. Give them a reason to want to be your friend. They have to learn to trust you. They have to learn that you have their best interests at heart, and the only way to do that is to come out here, make the commitment, and spend time with them become part of their family. And then once you do that, then you've got a friend. More than anything else, you have a friend. These are wild animals that have never seen people outside of the, the capture process. So now we have to try to convince them that we're the good guys. So we start with the treats. We start with just sitting out in the pens and getting them used to having someone around them all the time. And it, it can be a lengthy process, but it's, it's really worth the time. Our children are a huge part of this rescue. Aside from the maintenance aspect of how helping to clean up, they are a big part of the gentling process. Just their presence being kids out there running around, yelling, screaming, you know, play fighting, all the stuff that kids do, that's very important to the donkeys because that's natural things that now that they're going to live a domestic life, they have to be used to. Addison is ready for adoption, thanks to Mark and his boys. But for them, Letting go of a good friend will be the hardest part of Addison's journey as a rescue donkey in search of a permanent home. Folks aren't just horsing around. They're here because Mark has opened the gate to Peaceful Valley Donkey Rescue to all potential adopters. The average adopter is someone that has land but doesn't want a horse. Someone who is looking for a more enjoyable and unique pet. Each year we hold an event we call Meet the Donkeys, and it's an opportunity for people that would never normally get the opportunity to see a donkey to come out and also it's an opportunity for people that may be interested in adopting to come out and physically meet the donkeys to see what what they're like we have very good success we put a lot of donkeys in a lot of great homes as a result of this event this is the third year for mark's meet the donkey event they can just learn the history of the donkey uh, see the personality, but get to know the individuals and see which ones are available for adoption. Not only are the donkeys on display, so are the visitors. Mark talks with these would-be owners and tries to match them with a donkey that would fit their interests, needs, and Mark's qualifications for an appropriate donkey home. The Meet the Donkey event isn't just for newcomers. Tom and his wife have been talking with Mark for months trying to find the right donkey for them. The more interest in the wild of the donkeys that haven't been trained yet. The more I got to know Tom, the more I really respected him. He, he himself uh, has rescued many animals. Uh, he has several animals at his place that are all rescued. He also runs a kennel for dogs. And he's really a compassionate person. He's, he's, the, kind, he's the exact kind of person we're looking for to, to put our animals into because he really understands what they need. Tom is the perfect fit for a newly born burrow and a recently captured mother. Oh, look at that. Look at that guy. <laughs> he's taking, taking us all over. 
When Tom and his wife first came out, they were looking to adopt one donkey. Uh, they didn't have a horse, they didn't have another uh, companion animal for him. So we were kind of hesitant to approve any adoption like that. Uh, when the, the new batch of wild burros came in, they came out again, and they just fell in love with a mom and a newly born baby. And so that was perfect for us because it was the pair, so they would have companionship. These folks here are actually going to adopt instead of their mom and baby. Are they? Yeah. yeah. We have four more that are ready to go. We need four here. The adoption fair is the perfect stage to display Addison's love for kids. Oh my God, he's so cute. Look at him, Jack. You know, all the donkeys there had different personalities, and they were all wonderful. Yeah, I didn't know what was going to happen. I don't know. I didn't know if I would bond with anybody or what the donkeys were like. I had actually never met a donkey in person ever. I was really, really hoping that I would go to the fair and find the love of my life. A donkey, that is. <laughs> Um, no, it looks boy, like Addison has made a love connection, and now it's up to Mark to make sure that this bond will hold up. And so now we found a family that has a young child. They, they're real into their animals, and I think it's going to be a good mix. Because he needs somebody that's really going to love him and spend time and just really enjoy him. And I, I really feel good that uh, the family's going to be the right, the, the right mix for Addison. When I first saw Addison, I knew he was the guy I was going to bring home. He was so gentle and so kind. He's a true gentleman. Overall, the adoption fair was a great success. We had 16 donkeys adopted through it, both domestics and wild. And we found some really good permanent homes. Because these donkeys can live an average of 40 years, what we're looking for is not just a home for the next few years, but the, a home for the rest of this animal's life. And I think we found that in some of these adopters. Addison's adoption is a bittersweet event for Mark and his son. Well, you guys ready to load him up? Yep. Did you tell him goodbye yet? Now, let's put him in the trailer. Addison leaves his buddies behind and heads down the road to start his new life. After all the hard work and loving care, Mark's final step in his adoption process is to deliver the donkey to its permanent home. And in this case, it's Addison's turn to move in with his newly adopted family. Come on, your donkey's here. Ellie and her son Jeff have been anxiously waiting to welcome Addison to their home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think he's looking forward to his new home. We're looking forward to having him. And when Ellie says we, he means all the other animals on her farm as well including Addison's new roommate, the horses. All right, one of the things you have to remember is that when you feed him, he has to be separated from the horses because he can't have the horse food unless you feed your, your, your horses a uh, less protein-rich diet like a grass hay. They're all on grass hay. So then that's perfect, and they can all eat together. But you can't have any alfalfa, any oats, or anything like that. Um, and they work with him a lot, spend a lot of time touching him, getting him used to things. He, he's doing real well for us, but he's going to have to get used to his new home. So you have to become his friend first, and once you become his friend, then it'll be a lot easier for you to get him to do things that you want him to do. Addison is the newest member of Ellie's Gentle Barn Educational Facility, and the first donkey she's ever had. So Mark passes along some of his donkey know-how. Now, with him, because of his background, uh -huh. he gets a little sensitive around his backside. He, he has to learn that it's okay that we're touching him there and we're not going to hurt him. Okay. So start by rubbing down his leg, letting him know that you're not hurting him. And see, so he's going to switch his tail to warn me. That, that was a warning, that he doesn't like it. But we're just going to let him know that we're still going to do it. And see, he's got his ears on me. He's, he's watching me. And we're just going to 
Good boy. And when we pick it up, we give it right back to him. We tell him how good, what a good job he did. Good boy, Addison. And we it a couple of times. So that way he knows he always gets it back, that we're not going to take it from him. Great. Good, good boy. boy. One of the donkeys forever. This is so exciting. Like, oh my god, I have a donkey. <laughs> He's gonna be here forever, this is it. He's not gonna have to worry about being abandoned again, being hurt, being lonely. He's gonna be here forever. Addison is not the only one to find love in a new home. As a welcomed responsibility, Tom's new family members have become a big part of his life. Ready right here with all the goodies. Since moving in with Tom, this mom and baby donkey have become very sociable and trusting. Becky's getting really lovable. She seems to take a hold of me. Me hug her and oh we huh? This is Brent, a little grandson. <laughs> I like call him my grandson. He's a good little boy. Handsome little fella. Growing up in a loving environment is the best thing that could have happened for this young donkey, and for Tom as well. Come on, come on, let's go. Let's go down here, come on. Come on. Woo, boy, look at that. Jumpy time. Becky and Prince is like uh, members of the family. It's more like our grandchildren. <laughs> the grandchildren that we don't have. And I spent a lot of time up here playing with her and combing her. Mark said if you the more you brush her, the more the more tame she'll she'll be. As long as you're kind to animals, no no matter what they are, what kind of animal, they'll all be always kind to you. I've just wanted a donkey since I was a kid. You know you read Winnie the Pooh and you fall in love with Eeyore and go, Mommy, I want an Eeyore. And so my whole life I just wanted my very own Eeyore. They're so cute, how could you not want him? Look at him with his big, huge, fuzzy ears. He's so cute. Uh, uh.